Today I'm going to have a look at Bronco Models Airspeed AS51 Hauser Glider Mark 1. Now uh, this kit has caused me a few problems. It's huge! It won't fit onto my normal uh, pad. Uh, so I do apologise for the background. I'm going to have to probably try and do this a little bit differently from how I normally do. Uh, box measures 60 centimetres long, nearly two feet. So you can imagine what you're going to get when you get the box open. On opening the lid, you'll find that the box is packed to the brim with plastic parts. Now the parts count on this model isn't particularly high, about 240, um, but the pieces are quite large. What is noticeable is there is no noticeable fuselage section. Now we'll come to that a little bit later, uh, but you can't actually see a fuselage when you look through the sprues. Now here we have one outer panel section. Uh, the wings are totally smooth, uh, which is correct. This is a wooden skinned aircraft, so no rivet or engraved detail. Uh, you have got separate control surfaces and you have got the air brake spoilers on the top of the wing as separate parts. So you can actually pose those extended. Internally, as you can see on the lower section, there is quite a lot of uh, support structure, uh, which means there is absolutely no sink marks on the wing surfaces. Here we have the separate control surfaces, again totally smooth, totally correct. This posability will enable you to bring some animation to your model. Here we have the tail section uh, with the rudders. Uh, the rudders show a fabric effect, I think it's a little bit overdone, I'll probably uh, try and sand that down a little. It's not bad, but just maybe a tiny little bit overdone. Internally, the rudder sections are fully detailed all the way up. Uh, it's about six bulkheads going to here, uh, so you will have a lot of detail. Uh, that will be very handy when this is sold as a separate section for those who are going to produce a diorama featuring the tail section. Here we have the detail sprue. Uh, this supplies, there's two of these, these supply the wheels and the seats for the uh, troops. Uh, they have moulded in seat belts. They are actually quite nice, I think. I, I do sometimes quite like moulded on seat belts. Um, only problem is they are moulded all identically, which of course would be unlikely in the real thing. But hey ho, you're not going to see much of these anyway. Now this sprue provides uh, most of the cockpit section, uh, one of the inner floors for the cabin section, and the clue to the, what I was saying about the fuselage earlier. The fuselage is supplied in about nine separate pieces. This is one of the cylindrical halves. Uh, they will fit round the actual um, internal detail. So making sure everything is lined up is going to be quite crucial on this kit. So this is a rear section uh, just behind the wing with a trooper door. Internal detail, very nicely carried out. You have full string of detail and you will have a large number of bulkheads to position inside the fuselage. And here we have some of the bulkheads. Uh, there are a lot of these. Now I will actually suggest that you might want to remove them as you need them because they are all slightly different or use a pencil just to put a number on them so you can keep track. Here we have uh, the roof section and some of the inner wing detail. Here we have uh, more wing detail, a uh, wing spar, and two more fuselage sections. Uh, more bulk heights, more fuselage sections. I say this is, this is why you don't really get an idea of how long the fuselage is going to be, because uh, the fuselage is split up into all these little sections. Here you have the ch the uh, channels. These are oh balls. Here we have uh, more bulk heads and fuselage subsections. Uh, this one to the right here is actually the cargo door that opens up and again fully detailed on the inside really nicely detailed here we have the uh, like girders which actually fit up to the cargo door uh, this aircraft could carry a six pounder gun a quarter ton jeep or a cargo trailer um, so you can actually show this and these are all available in the Bronco range now here we have the uh, actual nose section of the glider and more of the internal detail. So moulding is very fine, very nice. Will look great with a wash. Uh, this really has got a kit that's got so much diorama potential. Here we have the clear parts, uh, super, super clear. 
really nice copy canopy. Uh, painting this is going to be key, but Bonko did give you some help on that. Uh, we'll look at that a little bit later. This is the uh, final plastic sprue and it's the underwing and undercarriage struts. Now this small box is what I would normally expect to find the canopy in. Uh, not in this case, the canopy though bagged is separate. The little box contains this really heavy nose weight. This will fit in the forward fuselage underneath the uh, fuselage floor to prevent tail sitting. This small etched brass fret is supplied. It has some belts and some details for inside the fuselage. For painting the canopy neatly, Bronco supply a full set of internal and external masks in a Frisk film type material. Now I'm a little bit confused by the instructions for this, uh, so I might have to report the back to that on the build log, uh, mainly because they give you lots of individual panels which they say you paint on the inside of the model, and uh, some larger panels to cover over the outside. I'm not quite sure that's correct, I'm going to have to check my references on that one. The decal sheet provides three options, two from the Royal Air Force and one from the United States, who received about 200 of these gliders. Uh, these all have D-Day stripes. One example has uh, some artwork, Churchill's Reply, which is a well-known glider. And you also do get some dials and placards. Now I will say these are not particularly inspiring, they're better than nothing, but I'll certainly be replacing them with examples from the air scale range. These illustrations on the box side give you some idea of the detailed nature of the internals and the fact that you have control surfaces that are posable that you can open up and display the internal large carrier door. A nice little extra is the Bronco do give you a print of the box artwork which would look quite nice framed and hanging up on your wall. The instructions are clear and precise. They show you exactly what fits where. I say accurate construction of uh, these sections will be crucial to the finished kit. Here's there showing the Jeep displayed inside the fuselage, which you can purchase separately. I mean, really, as long as you follow the instructions closely and do a lot of test fitting, this is a relatively simple kit despite its large size. Markings, rather nice RAF options, including one with the artwork, and a very unusual American example. So there we have it, my first look at the Bronco Airspeed Horsa Glider Mark 1. Uh, the way the sprues are set up it is possible we'll get the uh, later swing door Mark 2, uh, which will be quite nice. I'd say it's very unusual the way they've constructed this kit. It does leave it open to a lot of diorama possibilities and of course they have also released uh, the Jeep, the airborne Jeep, in their armour range for this kit as it's 135th scale. Rumours are that a C-47 Dakota will be appearing at some point to tow this beast. That really will be a large diorama. And you might also get the DFS-230. That's been promised for some time, and that is a more manageable glider uh, used by the Germans. We'd like to thank Bronco for supplying us with this sample, and I hope to have this built and on display at the Sand Publications stand at Telford. Now there's a challenge. <laughs>